Live from NPR News, I'm Corva Coleman. Former President Donald Trump is drawing condemnation for remarks this weekend at a rally near Dayton, Ohio. He spoke about changes in the U.S. auto industry and about China potentially selling its vehicles in the U.S. Trump said he would slap tariffs on those Chinese imported vehicles and that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he wasn't elected. Supporters say he was speaking only about the auto industry. NPR's Domenico Montanaro says Trump is making the most of the moment. This is what Trump does. You know, he throws out this kind of violent graphic language. He knows it's going to get a rise out of people, especially on the left, and generate headlines. Then he can wave his hand and blame the media for creating some false narrative. But while many are litigating what he meant by those comments, he, going less noticed in the same rally is Trump standing there and saluting January 6 rioters, calling them hostages and patriots, and saying their prosecutions are a disgrace. NPR's Domenico Montanaro reporting. The Israeli military says it's raiding what was once Gaza's main hospital, al-Shifa. Israeli military officials claim Hamas militants fired on them from inside the hospital. There are reports of many casualties. North Korea test-fired several missiles today, hours before Secretary of State Antony Blinken addressed a summit in South Korea. NPR's Anthony Kuhn reports from Seoul it's the first missile test by North Korea in more than a month. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says that North Korea launched several suspected short-range ballistic missiles, which flew eastward into the sea. The State Department condemned the launch and called on North Korea to re-engage in dialogue. North Korea refrained from launching missiles during recent U.S.-South Korean joint military drills. Instead, North Korean state media reported on leader Kim Jong-un supervising drills by paratroops, artillery, and tank units. In a speech at the opening of the Third Summit for Democracy in Seoul, Secretary of State Blinken warned of democratic backsliding in many countries. He praised South Korea as a champion of democracy, but made no mention of the North. Anthony Kuhn, NPR News, Seoul. In the U.S., rent is unaffordable for more people than ever, but federal housing vouchers are hard to get and they're hard to use. NPR's Jennifer Ludden reports on an experiment to give renters cash instead. Philadelphia picked 300 people from its voucher wait list and is subsidizing their rent for two and a half years. Angie Atkins says it saved her from eviction and let her be a better mom. For me to have Christmas, have Thanksgiving, it's able for me to put my son in Cub Scouts this year. Vincent Reyna at the University of Pennsylvania says those with cash won't face the red tape and stigma around vouchers. It could allow them then to maybe more easily lease a unit even at the same rent level in this other neighborhood, right, than they would have with a voucher. The federal housing agency HUD has called for more cities to help test out this new model as another way to help renters. Jennifer Ludden, NPR News, Philadelphia. You're listening to NPR News.